Uh, and here we go, J Jasper. Thank you, dude. Um, yeah, before I start my presentation, I really want to thank uh, Du and Chalida uh, for helping me organize uh, this. Uh, and I also want to do, thank the Documentary Club for hosting us uh, tonight. And thank you for uh, coming. It's really nice to uh, see you all here. Um, so my name is uh, Jasper Hocke, as Du said. I'm one of the programmers of ITVA. Uh, which is the International Documentary Film Festival of Amsterdam. Um, uh, so first, a very brief introduction of the festival. Uh, it started in 1988, uh, and this means that uh, it has been showcasing documentary cinema for over 31 years now. Um, and in these 31 years, uh, it grew out to be one of the biggest documentary film festivals in the world. Uh, right now, it's a 12-day event, um, uh, this year taking place from November 20th till December 1st. Uh, and it was not only a big audience festival, uh, attracting over 285,000 visits, uh, but it's also a big industry festival. So over 3,000 uh, industry professionals will come to ITVA to discuss, sell, buy uh, documentary films. Uh, and the combination of this audience festival and industry festival makes it a good launch pad for creative documentaries. Um, over the la past couple of years and over the next couple of years, we have our focus on talent, innovation and diversity. And before I am going to say what we're going to discuss uh, tonight, I want to show you a little clip of the festival. It's the after movie of our uh, last edition. And this will just give you a sense of the city of Amsterdam, uh, the venues we have, and the, the vibe uh, that's going on. any other documentary film festival anywhere. This is the relationship between ITVA and Amsterdam. It's for not only showing the greatest new works from very advanced filmmakers, but also gives a space to the young filmmakers with a new way of making films. It's not only movies, it's also culture, different people from around the world. So what I wanted to discuss today uh, are all the different things we're doing at uh, ITVA. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I'm one of the programmers, so I'm mainly dealing with the festival, which uh, has different competitions, uh, regular programs and other programs. We screen over 300 uh, films almost. Uh, but I also want to discuss some industry events we have during the festival or during other times of the year. 
so we have a fund uh, for films uh, from Asia, Latin America, Africa, uh, the Middle East and Eastern Europe. Uh, and Thailand is on our list of, uh, for funding. Uh, we also have two markets. One for films that are in different stages of development or production, called the ITVA Forum. Uh, and one for films that are finished. So the, that's ITVA Docs for Sale. And then we have two talent development programs, one taking place during the festival called ITVA Academy, uh, and one uh, taking place in the summer called the ITVA Summer School. Uh, I will go into all of those uh, a little bit more. Um, but before that, I want to read through uh, something uh, that is at the core of all the things we do. So the festival, the fund, the market, uh, in all of the things we do, we focus on creative documentaries. Uh, and for us, creative documentaries are uh, documentaries that are visually striking and express the filmmaker's vision. Uh, the filmmaker makes artistic choices in the use of cinematic means, so this can be uh, cinematography, editing, sound, uh, to tell their story or conf convey his or her vision on a certain subject. Uh, also, originality, expressiveness, cultural value and our historical value play an important role as well. Uh, this is one part of what we uh, consider as creative documentaries. Uh, another thing is that creative documentaries can also offer new insights into society. So they could open our eyes, stimulate our critical thinking. Uh, and ITVA strives to present films with urgent and social themes that reflect the spirit of the time in which they are made. They offer nuance and provide insight, making a reflection on current events possible. Um, and finally, ITVA searches for documentaries that manage to move the viewer. So the power of great, a great documentary is when it succeeds in touching us, getting us to feel uncomfortable, softening us up, or making us laugh. Uh, and I think all of these aspects I just mentioned are uh, coming back in the film uh, we will see uh, after this presentation. Uh, and I will be happy to discuss this with you, uh, uh, this concept and this film uh, with you afterwards. Um, so now, quickly going into uh, the festival itself. Uh, as I said, it consists of different kind of programs, uh, competitions, regular programs, other programs. Uh, for competitions, we have nine different competitions. Uh, and we split them up uh, based on different things. Uh, so first, we split them up uh, in the length. Uh, so there's a feature-length documentary competition for films uh, that are 70 minutes or up, a mid-length competition for films between 40 and 70 minutes, a short film competition for films up to 40 minutes. Uh, so this uh, means that we don't have to uh, choose a certain length or duration of a film, but can focus on uh, everything. And in the past, we have shown everything from five-minute films to eight-hour films uh, and everything in between. Uh, another focus for us is the stage of the career of the filmmaker. Uh, so we have a competition for student films, graduation films, uh, and a competition for first appearance, which is debut films, so the first feature-length documentary uh, a filmmaker has made. And then there's some more specific competitions, one for children's films called Kids and Dogs, one for Dutch documentaries, and two uh, competitions for interactive and new media projects. Uh, for most of the competitions, uh, we are quite strict. Uh, so our requirements are uh, quite strict. Uh, there's two important rules, and one is the premiere rule. So Films are only eligible if they are either a world premiere, which is the first ever screening, uh, an international premiere, which is the first screening outside of the country of production, or a European premiere, which means the first screening in Europe. Um, and there's the two festival rule, uh, which means that films cannot play in, at more than two festivals prior to uh, the festival. But we make some exceptions for our student competition, kids and dogs competition, and short competition. 
Um, I will tell you this probably for all the things we're doing, but uh, most of the programs we have are highly competitive. Uh, there's only 12 films that we select per competition, uh, and that's out of 4,000 submissions uh, almost. Uh, we can only pick around 250 new uh, films. Um, if a film is not a premiere or has played at more than two festivals, we also have a lot of other programs uh, where we can put uh, the films in. So for instance, if the film has played at festivals all over the world, we'll be happy to uh, consider it for our best of fests uh, section. And if you happen to be a master filmmaker, uh, uh, we can consider the film for our master section. If you made an experimental film, we'll consider it for our paradox section, and they don't have to be premieres or, and can screen everywhere, even in the Netherlands. And then there's two premiere sections called Luminous and Frontlight. Frontlight is focusing on bigger, more journalistic uh, stories. And Luminous is focusing on uh, more personal perspectives and stories. Uh, then there's a program which I curate it's called It Found Stage. Uh, and It Found Stage is a program in which we combine documentary cinema with performing arts. Uh, so this could be dance or music or theater. It's not that we do a film and then an event afterwards, but the performing art and the film are during the same time and are reflecting on each other uh, and are in dialogue with each other. Um, we also do a program called Top Ten. And for this program, we ask a uh, well-known documentary filmmaker to compile a program of his 10 favorite uh, films that inspired his work or his life and this year we have the Chilean uh, director Patricio Guzman uh, doing this program for us. Uh, we'll also show a retrospective of his work um, and present some focus programs uh, in which we show some old and new films around a certain topic. Uh, and finally, there's It for Doc Lab, that's the new media and interactive program I've mentioned uh, before. Uh, and to sum this all up, uh, it was open to films of any duration, but also on any subject or style, as long as it is a creative documentary. One important rule uh, for this year, films need, need to be finished uh, or completed after August 2018. Um, and our deadline is actually in a couple of days. Uh, so the deadline for submission is August 1. Uh, and if you want to submit a film, uh, I ask you to fill out the form online uh, and include a link an English uh, to the English subtitled version of your film. And I will be happy to give you fee waivers if you uh, want to submit the film. Uh, again, there's 4,000 sub uh, submissions every year. Last year, only 279 uh, were selected. Um, I want to discuss the defund uh, I've mentioned earlier, but before that I will show you a video with some clips of uh, films we've supported in the past couple of years. <laughs> two different strands in our, for, for our funding. So there's the IBF Classic and the uh, IBF Europe uh, Fund. Uh, and for Classic is projects from filmmakers and producers from Africa, Asia, Latin America, Middle East, and Eastern Europe. Uh, and it's a fund either for development or for production or post-production. Uh, for IBF Europe, uh, we are funding projects that, have, uh, that are international co-productions with a European uh, country. Uh, and 
be select uh, or support Thai projects for both of these uh, strands. So first, the Itva Birth of Fund Classic. This one is open for films from uh, any length, uh, again, by critical and artistic filmmakers. Uh, films about all kinds of themes and subjects, but we usually don't end up uh, supporting more anthropological reportage uh, style films, uh, but tend to support films with a strong visual treatment. Uh, and it needs to be local uh, films with an international uh, appeal. And for this uh, strand, we can, for, for the development, we can support up to 5,000 euros. Uh, and for production and post-production, we can support up to 17,500 euros. And for both uh, applications, it's very important to have some good uh, visual material that represents uh, the work you're going to make or the style you have as a filmmaker. And for the development uh, grant, it means that we need to see a trailer or some research material or maybe some photos uh, in, in a visual presentation just to give our selection committee a sense of what the film is going to look and feel like. Uh, for production and post-production, you probably have shot a little bit more uh, than that. Uh, so a trailer or edited sequence, rough cut, maybe a demo. Uh, would be nice if you could show us this. Uh, and apart from the visual material, we'll also ask for a written proposal uh, that includes a clear and simple synopsis, so explaining what the story is about, uh, and a more uh, advanced project description with some background information, a story outline, uh, some information about your visual approach, uh, protagonist, the access you have to them and the story, um, and a director's note in, in which you explain your ambitions and uh, goals making this film. Um, again, uh, this is a very competitive uh, program. Uh, only 3% of the projects that are submitted to us uh, get funded. Uh, not to discourage you, but it's good to know. Uh, writing a proposal, preparing your visual material is always a good uh, thing to do. Uh, it helps you understand your own film uh, and you can always use elements of this for other applications you may do. Uh, so I would really recommend to try, keep trying, continue to try uh, uh, submitting for this fund and other funds uh, along your way. Um, when you submitted your project, uh, we will let you know within three weeks if the project has been pre-selected. Uh, and then we'll probably ask you to send us some more information about uh, the film. And in, in case we select your project, uh, we'll send you the first payment within three months. Uh, and we continue to help you uh, throughout your uh, development, production, distribution uh, process. So the team uh, at the office uh, in Amsterdam will uh, try to guide you in the right direction. So if you have any questions about uh, other places to apply uh, the festival distribution, you can ask them and they will make sure to help you out. Uh, the only thing we will ask is the worldwide non-exclusive online VOD rights. Uh, this means that we want to put your film on our website. Uh, in the territories, uh, you don't have any distribution deals with. And it's only after a couple of days, and we're very flexible on this. So, um, For the European uh, fund, we only fund feature-length documentaries. Uh, and it needs to be a co-production between a European country and a country for a from Asia, Africa, Latin America, etc. Um, and for this fund, the European co-producer uh, must write the application. Um, the director preferably needs to live and work in uh, Thailand, uh, but they can also live in diaspora uh, in other places. 
and the share of the European producer needs to be 20% uh, minimum and a maximum of 70%. So it really needs to be co-production between these two or uh, more countries. Um, for this fund, we can, for, for co-production, we can fund up to 40,000 euros and support only five or six projects per year. Uh, and our next deadline is on the 1st of April 2020. Uh, and for the distribution of international co-productions, we can support up to 30,000 uh, euros per project, uh, but that's only two or three uh, projects per year. Um, and for this one, the, you can almost always apply apart from November 2019. Uh, but for the rest of the year, this uh, will be open. Um, I will go quickly go through our two markets. Uh, so we have one market for co-production and co-financing. Um, this is a four-day four event during our festival, um, where a lot of teams, film teams, will pitch their projects to uh, producers, directors, commissioners, funders, sales agents, uh, all kinds of uh, documentary professionals who gather in Amsterdam. And for the forum specifically, there are more than 600 uh, professionals there who watch these public pitches. Um, again, highly competitive. Out of the 800 applications, only 51 are selected. Uh, we, we do public pitches, uh, so the people uh, can gain and share their market knowledge and meet the pitching teams uh, afterwards. So they're not only discussing with the commissioners or funders that, that, are, that are at the table, but also with uh, the people that are in the audience. For the forum, we're looking for creative documentaries, uh, again, uh, but those are th that are intended for theatrical distribution, uh, TV broadcasting, and other platforms. Um, and it can help you find co-production partners and uh, expand your network uh, and contacts uh, and will also help you uh, uh, to give you information about the funders and uh, opportunities uh, and professionals that are there. These are some very low res uh, photos of the forum but on the first one you see one of the public pitches uh, we do. So there's a table with the film team and a uh, also some film professionals, so mostly commissioning editors, uh, funders, and uh, people from uh, other kinds of platforms who are listening to this pitch, giving feedback, uh, and then there's the audience of other film professionals who listen uh, to this, but you can meet them uh, in one-on-one -on -one meetings afterwards. Um, on the next two photos, you see uh, a presentation of rough cuts. So if you have a rough cut uh, that you want to pre present to get your post-production uh, funding, uh, you can uh, be give a platform to pitch your project in 20 minutes uh, and have feedback from the audience uh, as well. And on the last one, you can see uh, some of the one-on-one -on -one, one meetings we are planning. Uh, so there's film teams talking with uh, people from the audience. Uh, last one for before the next clip. Uh, so there's Docs for Sale. This is our market for finished uh, films. Um, it's a it's. A selection of 400, around 450 films that can be seen online by uh, broadcasters, commissioning editors, sales agents, uh, and festival programmers. But it's also a seven-day event during the festival where all these people come together uh, to see these films in booths, but also to meet uh, the production teams uh, to discuss deals and opportunities. Uh, and we also pre-schedule meetings uh, with these professionals. Uh, and just to give you a little sense of these two markets, I will show another clip.
wonderful place for industry and creators to come and convene and support each other. You can find very interesting and very diverse um, projects for international co-production. Something totally different from what we have in Japan. This is the highlight of the year. When you come to the Infra Forum, it's always a little bit like an uplifting moment for me. It has always been like a key moment of the whole year. Everything will be in place in this time, this part of the city. This is something really extraordinary. So I've been able to see, uh, from an international level, great people pitching their ideas, asking for support, and trying to understand where they can move their project. marketing, sales, promotion, and obviously the commercial side of the films. My goal is first and foremost the films that we have to make sure everyone knows about them. And the second is you yourself have to be here because this is inspiring, this is a community feeling. The, the few meetings we did, it was really effective and very good for us. We did uh, sales, both sales agents and uh, festivals. For me, Docs for Sale, it's not only about the, the official meetings, but also this happy hour. It's really effective. It's, it's something really nice. I managed to meet a lot of uh, people and decision makers who usually are having crazy schedules. So I wish it always stay there. We have a program for very professional. And it's at the same time, it's very diverse. They're very serious to talk about the industry and films and document theater. I was so excited and also at the same time so nervous, but I've been so happy. This was this is uh, for ITFA, also about documentary, but it explores more the boundaries in documentary experiments, non-linear, technology in documentary, interactivity. Exploration space for uh, exploring the boundaries of what documentary we can It's basically giving validity to a new field um, and really saying we support you and we want to figure out how to get more financial and co-production support to the filmmakers and to the creators and it's a really wonderful way to move the industry forward. Right, the last two things I want to discuss are our talent development uh, programs. Uh, first, we have the ITF Academy. This is an event taking place during the festival, and this year it will be from the 21st to the 24th of November. It's for emerging filmmakers and producers, and you don't apply with a project, you apply as a person. Uh, there are around 100 international participants, uh, but because we get funding from Europe, most of them will be uh, from European countries. But there's places from people outside of Europe as well. Um, the attendees are usually first-time uh, filmmakers working on their first or second feature. Uh, it's a very intense program. Uh, you will get to uh, meet a lot of people, but also go to a lot of case studies, master classes, uh, meet the professionals. There will be a lot of networking and one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, and the focus is both on inspiration, so by well-known filmmakers telling about how they made their films. Uh, but it's also uh, a little bit more practical. Uh, about, for instance, how to make a trailer, how to prepare for a pitch, uh, and where industry professionals share their market knowledge uh, with you. And for this, our application deadline is on the 1st of September. 
Uh, then there's the ITVA Summer School, which doesn't have a European focus, so it's really uh, international. Uh, it was just a couple of weeks ago, but there will be another one uh, next year. Uh, so it's one week in, by the end of July, or the end of June, beginning of July. Uh, and for this talent uh, program, you apply with a project that is either in development stage, so script development, or in editing phase. Uh, again, for first and second time directors, but we'll pair you with um, experienced film professionals uh, who will be the tutor of uh, these uh, film teams. Um, in total, we select 16 projects, eight for uh, uh, development and eight for uh, editing. Uh, and the program will consist of coaching, group sessions, uh, but also master classes and film screenings. Uh, and for this, for the summer school, I, I also want to show you uh, one last clip. It Academy is it for playing its role in bringing together two generations. Those who are experienced, seasoned filmmakers with a long track record, together with new talent from all around the world, with very interesting projects and very interesting new view of documentary film as much as the world itself. It's my first time here in Infa Academy and I like it very much. I'm trying to speak with them about film language, about my way of filmmaking and to exchange it. What is important it is that the individual director find their way, their voice. I think also the variety of project, it shows that there are so many different ways of making films. What is very amazing about the Academy is that each tutor works for a whole week with two projects. You allow enough time to sort of go to the bone of each project. It makes you challenge your own process and polish it, crystallize your own ideas, your own approach. This is what I think is special here. So this was it for me. Um, I will be here after the screening as well, so please come up to me. I've left some flyers of the fund, uh, some, uh, some, some business card and some call for entry cards at the table over there. And I also will be in Bangkok for the next couple of days. So if you want to plan a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, please do. I will be happy to hear about your projects, tell a little bit more, answer any questions uh, you might have. So please come up to me uh, after the screening. Um, the film we're about to see uh, is called The Other Side of Everything. Uh, this film was part of our main competition in 2017, so our feature length documentary uh, competition. Uh, and it ended up winning uh, the main award. Uh, I just saw it in Phnom Penh two days ago and it's, it's really amazing. And I'm going to watch it again, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you. Do you know what is the key? No. What is the key? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Ja nisam sigurna da li su oni nas špionirali i to posle prijavljivali. Ali tu ste mogli da im čujete glasove? Da. I da nikad nisi razmišljala da me će s komunizmom završiti? Ne. Ti ne znaš kako rad poče. U svemu građanski rad. Dok ne poče. Ja pripadam ovima koji misle da ovo je zemlji treba živjeti po svaku cenu. Mira i demokratije! 
создала более искренний фасад в городе Кузнецова, в городе Мерского. Это ты диктатура изнала. Ну, а чем это не нормально. Дай рой, я не себе буду жить. Как это не кому рода меня, мора меня некоторые свои вибрации. Твое определение, не кому чем мора ты.